from Tennessee for his courtesy, and I yield the floor. Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, on next Tuesday, the nation's largest exporter and an employer of 159,000 Americans will be appearing before an administrative judge in Seattle to defend itself against a claim brought by the Acting General Counsel of the National Labor Relations Board. That claim is that a corporate decision to expand production of its, quote, next generation airliner in South Carolina, a right to work state, is a violation of federal labor law. Since 1947, the federal law has affirmed the right of states to enact what we call right to work laws, which prevent unions and employers from requiring employees to join a union, as well as pay dues or fees in order to keep their jobs. In my own state of Tennessee, for example, manufacturers such as Nissan, and now Volkswagen, and General Motors have built factories and increased the production of cars made and sold in the United States, in large part due the, to the environment created by Tennessee's right to work law. The President recently went to the Midwest to say in effect that the auto bailout helped restore the American automobile industry. I would respectfully disagree. I think what has restored the American automobile industry has been the right to work laws in 22 states, which have created a more competitive environment in those 22 states and in the Midwest and other states where the laws don't exist, which permits manufacturers to be able to make in the United States cars and trucks that they sell in the United States. But unfortunately, Mr. President, American companies in our 22 right to work states are under assault from a government agency that's driven by an anti-business, anti-growth, and an anti-jobs agenda. This may be the most important battle over labor laws in the United States today. That's why Senator Graham and DeMint and I, actually we have 35 senators co-sponsoring this bill, have introduced legislation to preserve the law's current protection of right to work and prevent the NLRB from moving forward in their case against the Boeing Company and others. The Job Protection Act, as we call it, will prevent the NLRB from ordering, ordering a company to relocate jobs, will guarantee employer rights to decide where to do business, and protect employer free speech associated with the costs and benefits of a unionized workforce. The company that will be tried on Tuesday is Boeing, a solid, upstanding American success story. Over the last century, Boeing has built the passenger planes that allow Americans to travel the world, has built the warplanes and weaponry that enable our soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen to defend freedom, has built the spacecrafts that send our astronauts into orbit and to the moon, has built satellites that deliver communications around the globe. Boeing's newest commercial passenger airliner is the 787 Dreamliner. It's a shining example of American innovation and American entrepreneurship. It's been designed with a paramount focus on efficiency and performance to allow a mid-sized aircraft to travel as far as a jumbo jet while using 20% less fuel and producing 20% less emissions than today's similarly sized aircraft and traveling at roughly the same speeds as a 747 or 777. It has also been a tremendous commercial success despite these difficult economic times. Since 2004, 56 customers spanning six continents have placed orders for 835 Dreamliners valued at $162 billion. President Obama has recognized the leadership of this company. He's named the chief executive officer of the company, Mr. McNerney, as chairman of the nation's Export Council. And more recently, uh, Mr. Bryson has been nominated to be the nation's Commerce Secretary. The Boeing success prompted the company to decide in 2009, two years ago, to establish a second assembly line for the airliner in South Carolina. This is in addition to its current assembly line in Washington State. South Carolina is a right to work state. Washington State is not. On Tuesday, next Tuesday, 
the NLRB acting general counsel will ask an administrative judge in Seattle to stop Boeing from expanding its production in South Carolina, arguing that the decision was made in retaliation for past strikes by union employees in Washington. That claim ignores these facts. No union jobs are being lost here. Nobody is being demoted. No personnel are being moved. No benefits, salaries, or work hours are being cut back as a result of this expansion. It ignores the fact that Boeing's decision was announced, as I said, nearly two years ago. That means that down in South Carolina, there have been 9,000 construction jobs. They've hired 1,000 new workers to work at this plant, and the plant's supposed to open next month in July. At the same time, Boeing has actually added 2,000 new jobs in Washington State since its announced expansion in South Carolina. That's 2,000 new union jobs in Washington State. South Carolina, of course, is a right-to-work state where employees may choose to join the union or not join the union. Suspending its expansion to South Carolina will result in billions of dollars of lost economic development and jobs to that state. But the NLRB's acting general counsel does not seem to care about these facts or the impact of this case on those jobs. Recently, several of Boeing's employees in South Carolina whose jobs are hanging in the balance, asked to intervene in the case. The acting general counsel opposed that, stating that, quote, these Boeing employees in South Carolina have no cognizable interest in participating in the proceeding sufficient to justify their intervention, unquote. Now, Mr. President, it's hard to imagine anyone with a more direct interest in this than the Boeing workers in South Carolina, but facts like these don't seem to matter when you have an agenda. But this case is about more than airplanes, more than Boeing, and more than South Carolina. This is about the future of our economy and our competitiveness as a nation. It's just the latest attempt by this administration to chip away at right to work laws, to change the rules and give unions more leverage over employers and have politically influenced bureaucrats in Washington determine the means of production for private industry in the United States. If the acting general counsel's request is affirmed following next week's hearing, it will be prime facial illegal for a company that has experienced repeated strikes to move production to a state with a right to work law. The, the chief executive of Boeing, Mr. President, has pointed out that this will not only hurt the 22 right-to-work states, it's also not good for the states that do not have a right-to-work law. Those non-right-to-work states will suffer because a company that operates in their state that is unionized will effectively be prevented from growing or expanding to a right-to-work state, therefore hindering the ability of any state to attract new manufacturers and, and create new jobs. So instead of making it easier and cheaper to create jobs in the United States of America, manufacturers will be further incentivized to expand or open new facilities in Mexico, in China, or India to meet their growing needs. Boeing and its 787 Dreamliner are shining examples of what is right in America and what is necessary to rebuild and grow our country's economy. The new production plant in South Carolina is the first new assembly line for large airplanes in 40 years in our country. And we need to remember that Boeing sells airplanes everywhere in the world and that it can make airplanes anywhere in the world. We would like for Boeing and other manufacturers to make in the United States what they sell in the United States so the jobs can be in this country instead of overseas. As this administration's Commerce Secretary, Gary Locke, correctly observed in March testimony before the Senate Commerce Committee, quote, manufacturing is essential to America's economic competitiveness. It's a vital source of good middle-class jobs. It's a key driver of innovation, said Mr. Locke. With 9.1% unemployment, with a soft economy, government and Washington need to allow manufacturers such as Boeing to prosper, innovate, 
and create jobs. We need to make it easier and cheaper for those manufacturers to make in the United States what they sell in the United States. Expanding new production lines in South Carolina was a business decision made by Boeing's executives and board members on behalf of their shareholders who believe it was in the country's best interest. As I mentioned, those board members, those chief executives of that company are well respected, including by the President of the United States, who has invited them to be a part of his administration. But under this administration, the NLRB seems only to be concerned about the interests and agenda of organized labor, an agenda that has been soundly rejected by the vast majority of private sector workers in both right-to-work states and non-right-to-work states across the country in recent years. So, Mr. President, all eyes will be on Seattle next Tuesday when one of our nation's greatest assets and contributors to our economic future will be put on trial for investing, creating, and innovating in our country at a time when we're in the middle of an economic recession. This will be a true test of whether manufacturers are able to make in the United States what they sell in the United States, or whether they will be encouraged to make overseas what they sell in the United States and put those jobs there instead of here. It will be a true test of whether the administration's export policy is exporting airplanes or exporting jobs. Mr. President, I yield the floor. And I notice the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.